I've been a foster parent myself. Over 60 plus children have come through my home. I've had as many as 11 in my house at the same time. So I really understand the unique challenges that foster parents face. My doctorate was centered around foster care. I've written several best-selling books in foster care, the TED Talk, Travel the World, working with agencies, child welfare programs, foster parents, work with legislators in Washington, D.C. and across the country on foster care reform, and really am driven daily uh, due to my own experience as a foster parent to make the system a better one for all, for the foster parents, for the children in foster care, for the birth parents, and for society as a whole. Awesome. We thank you so much for what you do for um, the kiddos who could use some of the help the most. Um, and uh, I should just back up to and, and talk about why we're so excited to talk with you today. American SPCC has been around for uh, about 12, 13 years now, a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated solely to the prevention of child maltreatment by raising awareness of the lifelong impacts of um, ACEs, which are adverse childhood experiences and adversity in general in childhood of all forms. So our goal is really to provide confidence and capacity to caregivers to give you those skills, tools, and resources that you need to be able to, to support those kiddos in your lives. So we're so excited to talk today about um, foster care kiddos. And they don't necessarily need to be kiddos that um, we directly have in our lives. I'm just thinking down in my community, um, if I am communicating with a neighbor and I know that they're a foster parent or they're taking in a new foster kid and I want to find ways to be able to support the people in my local community, where, do, where would you say I could start? Well, it's a great question. And, and I would back up by saying not everybody can be a foster parent, but everybody can help a child in crisis in some way, you know, with, with roughly 450,000 to 500,000 children in foster care. And that number certainly fluctuates all the time. Um, that means there's a child in crisis in every single community in our nation, in every single neighborhood or town, if you will, sometimes within our own family. And, you know, 300,000 children victims of human trafficking in America, 5 million children witness ex or experience domestic violence in their own home. Again, every single community. So if someone says, you know what, I, I can't be a foster parent to these children in my home, but I really want to help. You know, the first thing they can do is they can reach out to their local foster care agency or child welfare program and ask, hey, you know, I'm interested in helping. Could I provide school supplies? Could I provide backpacks filled with hygiene items? Could I provide meals for the foster parents or maybe gifts during Christmas and the holiday season and birthdays? Could I be a mentor for these children? If I have my own business, maybe I could hire one who's a teenager and teach them some important job skills. There's just so many ways they can help. And it really, again, it begins by contacting your local foster parent agency and saying, hey, how can I help? So when you say contacting your local foster care agency, break that down. Does that look different state by state or how can we find the right people to talk to who when we call, they're going to know what we're, what we're looking for, who we're looking for, I should say. You hit it on the head. It really does differ from state to state. 50 different states, which means 50 different ways of doing foster care. Is that great or is that bad? It, both. You know, no state does it perfectly. All states has their, their challenges to be sure. Um, but, you know, so you, you just maybe go online and type in your own county, your own area, your own state for a child welfare agency or a foster care program in your area where you live. Okay. And, you know, we talked previously before we uh, hopped on and I was asking you, you know, for me, I'm always thinking, um, I don't want to offend people or overstep, I should say, um, when I'm trying to be helpful when, when I know there's a delicate situation. But you said something to me that kind of stood out when I say, would how would it seem if I kind of went up to a neighbor, if I knew that they uh, were an ongoing foster parent and said, hey, what can I help with? And you said, I just was wondering if you could kind of repeat that. I'd say, thank you for asking. Thank you so much for asking. God bless you. Uh, yes, you know, it's, um, it, it's a very unique lifestyle. To me, it's the hardest thing I've done. It's the most rewarding thing I've done. Make no mistake. And every child's made me a better person in some way, but it, it's challenging. It's, it's, you know, when you have a child in crisis in your home, suffering from trauma, abuse, anxiety, whatever it might be, uh, it, it, it can be tough. So, you know, we welcome somebody to help because we again we recognize as foster parents that not everybody can do what we're doing but everybody has a place in helping a child in crisis where we live where we all live in every community so i would think that the vast majority of foster parents would be very 
open and very grateful for any type of assistance. Yes, we get a per diem per day, but the per diem does not cover all that we wish to give these children. When a child comes into my house, there's no label. There's no foster or adoptive or biological. They're my children, and I love them unconditionally. So I want my children to have the same opportunities that every child can have, which means, you know, I'm, I'm paying for camps and and and, and sports and uh, musical instruments and and things like i want to make their birthdays and christmas huge because most kids in foster care have never celebrated a birthday or celebrated christmas so i want to make these things huge and yeah a lot of the times it comes out of my own wallet and i i happily do so because again these are my children but any type of assistance is always welcome it, you mentioned at the beginning, and I, I kind of wanted to come back to it. Um, say your heart is is speaking so much this, and, may, and maybe you weren't at this place in your life where you could even fathom taking in a kiddo, and maybe you are considering it now. How do you start going down that path and, and start determining whether that's something that you can and maybe should learn more about becoming a foster well, parent? That's a great question. And let's clear up some of the misconceptions first. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be married. You don't have to have a big house, you have to have a big heart. So the first thing I always recommend is talk to your spouse, talk to your partner if you're in a relationship, because you both have to be on board. You both have to be fully committed because if one is fully committed and the other one is not, it's going to be a big strain on your relationship because you both have to be involved in this child who is coming in your home, was placed with your family that again is suffering from some sort of trauma. So that's the first thing. The next step is you, once again, you contact your local foster care or child welfare agency and say, hey, I'm interested in becoming a foster parent. How can I begin the training process? And every state has different requirements, if you will, in regards to training to become licensed. And you just undergo that as a police background check, a home inspection, um, and then hours of training. And that's those hours are, are very important to help prepare you and give you the skills and resources to support these children who are in pain. Yeah. And um, any sort of specific, I imagine, um, on your website, and there might be others that people could um, look to to maybe kind of learn more questions to ask themselves or things to consider if they're really at the kind of beginning of their journey to understanding maybe they could be a part of uh, of the foster care system by being a supportive uh, parent to one of these kids? Oh, sure. We have lots of resources here at the Foster Care Institute. You know, um, the first book I wrote was called Fostering Love, One Foster Parent's Journey. I wanted to, I wanted to uh, describe the lifestyle of a foster parent no, not sugarcoated whatsoever. The, the, the real facts about a foster parent, um, the highs, the lows, the challenges, the triumphs, the successes, the failures, lots of humor, lots of emotion. And I wanted to, I wanted someone to read that book and say, hey, you know what? I'm interested in doing this. Yeah. So again, the Foster Care Institute has so many resources about becoming a foster parent. And, and one thing I, I should have also mentioned, besides talking with your spouse, you also need to talk to your children. Your children need to be involved in this as well. Because I, I tell you what, 60 plus kids and 11 at the same time, seven in diapers, there was no way I could have done it without my own children. Oh, good call. The, the, the older ones, especially helping when you had the little ones. <laughs> yes, yes. They, don't, they just don't want to change diapers, but they like feeding the babies. Yeah. Okay, I mean, that's something though. <laughs> Uh, wonderful. Well, and I should mention too, you, we talked about a few different ways that community members can support foster families in their area. And you did just write a wonderful article for AmericanSPCC.org on that. I will get that link attached to this video, depending on what platform this is um, being hosted on. So that's there. But anything else um, in parting that you can kind of offer people who want to be a part of the foster care community um, from kind of, uh, you know, the neighbor, the neighbor that's helping those people in their community? Well, you know, as you and I are having this conversation and as people are watching this conversation, there's a child right now near where each of us live that is crying out, that is hoping, that's praying that someone's going to help them. Now, there's there are 
children, I can't emphasize this enough, there are children in every single community that are being abused, that are being raped, that are being neglected. And if we don't step to help these children, then who will? Then who will? These aren't goods and services. These are the lives of children. And, and I often tell people that, you know, I, I can't change the world and, and you can't change the world. But when we decide, when we choose to help a child in crisis, their world is changed. Their world is changed. So if you want to change the life of a child, then either bring these children to your home as a foster parent or, or, or um, work alongside, partner with your local foster parents, partner with your foster care agency, and provide support services, provide help. Hmm. Thank you so much. That's so powerful. And um, thank you for everything you do and for sharing your wisdom with us today. And we hope to continue chatting. Thank you for being a member of our Trusted Parenting Network and for having conversations like this. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much.